Hello, my friends. Today, I like to speak in our class about Adam's Sixth Commandment and the connection to the heavenly spheres. A very interesting topic. How we came to that topic to speak about it? If you remember from uh, our last class on the uh, Messiah on a mystical Messiah, as we kind of went over, went over the historical prog uh, the evolution of the concept of Messiah, mystical Messiah, we came across of Kabbalistic works published in fourth, fifth century, the book of Yetzira, the book of Bahir, the beginning of Kabbalah, which are important to the topic of mystical messiah, but uh, I also mentioned to you that uh, those books are very important also for Bnei Noach because they deal a lot with the connection between the sixth commandment of Adam or seventh commandment of Noah, if you wish, and the concept of the heavenly sphere. And that's a very interesting topic to Bnei Noach to, to be aware of. So let's dedicate our class today to that connection between the sixth commandment of Adam or the seventh commandment of Noah are the same and the heavenly sphere. What is the connection between those two topics? So the very topic of commandment implies by definition, there is someone who ordered those commandments, a king, a government. So if we have commandment, we have a king who commanded them. Indeed, according to Isaiah chapter 2, it says that the messianic time, the other nation will flock to Jerusalem to learn the way of Hashem. It means the six, seven commandment of Noah. I will read it to you. And all the nation will say, come, and let us go up to the mountain of Hashem, of Jacob, God of Jacob, and he teaches us his ways. Referring the commandment. And he will and we will walk in his path. The commandment. For out of Zion shall come forth the Torah and the word of Hashem from Jerusalem, and he shall judge between the nations. The Messiah will judge according to the seven laws. So this, as far as the commandment, now Zechariah, the prophet Zechariah in chapter 14, fulfilled fill the gap and he talked about the king who ordered those commandments. He says, on that day, Hashem will be the king all over the earth. So by he mentioned Hashem as a king all over the earth, who is the one who gave the commandment. So here in the Messianic time, all nations will recognize Hashem kingship. And the walk in the sixth commandment that Hashem gave. So again, now we go to the question, what does it mean Hashem kingship? Where is it defined in the Torah? There is only one place in the Torah where kingship of Hashem is defined, and this is the first commandment, the first of the Ten Commandments, which says, I am Hashem your Elohim, who took you out of Egypt. That's how Hashem presents himself when he's talking 
on Sinai. That's how he wants us to think about him and to remember him and to pray to him in this fashion. So there are three lines here that are structured here. First, the I am, the essence. You speak, he has an essence. We we'll talk about it. What does it mean? And he has an attribute, Hashem Yo Elokim, the attribute of the mercy, Hashem, YHVH, and Elokim, the attribute of uh, justice. We learn it a lot, we discuss it a lot in our classes. So, line number two are the attributes. It can be judgmental, it can be merciful. It depends on the throne on which he sits at that point. And number three is uh, the one we are looking for, is a kingship. This is what it does in the universe, in human history. Here it says, we took you out of Egypt. So here, talking to the slave, former slave that just came out of Egypt, uh, his kingship is, present, is represented by the fact that he is the one who intervened and took, you, took them out. So that's called kingship. So now we have the def definition what kingship of Hashem is all about, presented in both three lines. We illustrate what does uh, this structure mean. Uh, <clears throat> let's just think about the American government, the USA government. It also operates along these three lines. The first line of the American government would be the self-definition, the self. We the people, and the, this conception of the self contain everything uh, American people think it's important. Like it, it's uh, expressed in a form in a declaration of independence <clears throat> that guide the, go the government. It would contain values important values like freedom, uh, be, uh, uh, the human right, uh, if brotherhood, peace, democracy, all the essential values that uh, encompasses the American government and, and come from the how we, how the American people think about themselves and their society. So that's line one, the self, which American government also has conceptually. Now, American government also has a second line, which is a Congress. It has two parties in it, the attributes, and, and it, two parties, at least two parties, they debate between themselves the policy. And they can be opposite of each other, but they somehow after the debate, bring them out, bring them to the, to the point where they need to come to some kind of agreement, decision, which then they final, they channel down, so to speak, to the third line, which is a government, the White House, to implement or to execute the decision of the Congress. And the Congress allocate also the resources to the White House to implement those in, uh, decisions. So again, American government conceptually also works along, along those lines, self, attribute to Congress, there is the, the laws are the policy is are debate is debated, and the decision is funneled down to the government, 
for execution of the verdict. And the same thing is a, 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 the government of, a, of Hashem. It also has a self, where the values of a, a God government would be everything important uh, for the Torah, for the conception of the Torah is like issues like, like uh, uh, oneness of God. God is not man. God is one. God is, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, the universe is created for our goodness, to show goodness on us. And to show on us wisdom, and to show on us the ability to decide between holy and mundane. These are the principles of the self of line number one of God government. Then comes line two the attribute, the two parties that uh, Hashem formed uh, in the form of attribute, uh, that they debate the policy. Some of them, uh, one, of, one of them would be a merciful one, Hashem, Yud Hei Vav Kei, and the other one would be judgment. Just, uh, and those two attributes debate, they each present different opinion. And when they finally come out to, the, to conclusion, to a verdict, they would final down the verdict of the, of the court, of the government, to, the, uh, to line three, the kingship of God, who will implement the decision in real life. So God, this is a commandment. It's not a just philosophical presentation of God. It's a commandment, number one. This is why Hashem talked to us, present himself to us, warning us to think about him this way and not another way. Now, can I can can I can can I uh, lean back and say, well, uh, I don't. Uh, I'm a simple man, and I don't like uh, to. It's beyond me. All I know, all I want is to be a good man, to to do good things and to pray for him and to sing hallelujah, whatever. I don't like to, I leave all this discussion that you showed me here to the rabbis. I'm not interested. Leave me alone. Would you say that, could you say that as a citizen of the United States government? Could you lean back and say, well, Come on, leave me alone with the Congress, the White House, unite the, to be the people, liberty to kill. I don't care about all I, I like to just pay my dues, income tax, watch TV, be a good man, that's all. You cannot say, you wouldn't say that as a citizen of the United States, because not only you are required to know the shape in the government of the government, but you are also required to vote for it and to shape it in your in your by your voting. You need to know what the parties are, and you need to make a stand which party you choose, and you need to put a stand who is your government, who is your president, how the how the kingship will work, and how much to allocate for this and that. So to be a good citizen of United States government, you need to know how it functions. How much more so when you are a citizen of God kingship. 
And God could she be the one that they listen to you and wait for your input. Because your input and your behavior dictate the shape and the form of the of, of this heavenly court or heavenly government. It is your decision if there will be more mercy or, or more, more judgment in, in, a, in a, a court. It is your, your behavior which dictate how much, how and how God will implement his decision in the real world. And it's your decision if to accept kingship on you or not. <clears throat> because unlike the United States government, which is here to stay, the same way, God's government is not like this. God's government is very sensitive to your input. If you, you, if you misbehave in such a way that the merciful one will shy away from you and from, from, the, from the court, if she disappear, coming back, going back to the Sabbath, leaving you with only one attribute like Elohim, it's not going to be that good. If your protection, if your defense will go away, leaving you just with a prosecutor, it's not so good. So your input and your behavior changes the shape of the heavenly government and how it works. And that's why we twice a day express our supporting for accepting this call. And we say the Shema twice a day, bless is his kingship forever, we say twice a day. And we think about this kind of kingship in the Shema of the two attributes. And once a year in Rosh Hashanah, we accept his kingship in big time. The whole celebration of that is anniversary of Adam creation. And we dedicate the anniversary to accept Hashem kingship of us. What kind of kingship? This kind. With the two attributes protecting us. So if I know, if I have to know the United States government structure in order to function, how much more so, I need to know, it's a commandment to know, the structure of a shame and how to change it. And what should I do in order to bring on me only goodness and protection and love for Hashem. And that's the purpose of of, uh, of presenting Hashem in uh, kingship in this fashion in, uh, in the first commandment. Now, this line three, kingship of Hashem, is presented here uh, as he is the one who redeemed us from Egypt. But this kingship is anything he does in the universe. It can be written as, I am the one who giving you the Ten Commandments. I am the one, I am the king who give you, order you, this commandment to abide with. So his kingship is expressed in the commandment. Important, to important concept. Or he can say, he could have said, I am the one who created the world in six days. It's another topic of, of, of kingship. So I am the one who gave you the Ten Commandments. I am the one who took you out of 
Egypt by ten plagues, plagues. I am the one who created the universe by ten orders. If you count how many times Elohim said in chapter one, let it be, ten. <clears throat> so ten, ten, and ten. So the Sefer Tzira observed it, and he said that all of, all of those ten are the same. The Ten Commandments, the Ten Plagues, and the Ten Voices in creation. So Hashem mediated or <coughs> expressed his kingship by those ten orders or sphere as we call as the Sever Etzira call it, spheres. It's a degree of holiness, the orders that he executed a time of creation, ten times he spoke, ten times he, he, he inflicted, inflicted the, the plagues on the Egyptian, and ten times he gave the commandments. Why ten times? Why, why wasn't enough one? Because Sefer Etzira says each time he gave an order, he was there. He didn't sit at home and order it. He went along there and he, he, he executed the command right away. He was there with the command. In Egypt, he was there with, with every plague that he made. That he, inflicted. he was there at a time when they came out. I will be with you, he said to Jacob. He was along with his, he accompanied his own words. So Sefer says, when God speak, is he is not just sending the word. He is himself, so to speak, coming along with those words to implement it. Unlike a people or a person who I say something and the voice uh, travel in the air, independent on me now. His God, it's not like this. Uh, when he say issue an order, a special aspect of him travel with the order to implement it. He is there with the, with the order. He is there with each commandment. Extremely important point. When you, when you fulfill a commandment, you actually connect to Hashem. When he, he, when he inflicted the plagues on Egypt, he was there with Moses. Each time Moses lifted his hand, it was not Moses, it was Hashem who did it. And we, he did, when he did create the universe, it was not just he said, let it be water, let it be vegetation, let it be, and he set the in the office and he, he saw that thing happening far away. He was there with the order itself, implemented the order. Day one, day two, each day he was there. <clears throat> and that capacity, so to speak, of Hashem, to be with along with the order, to travel with the order, says the Sefer Yitzira, Sefer Bahir, is considered sphere. Sphere is not a round. Sphere is, is come from Saper, the Saper talking. So with each order, with each command, it travels along with the command. That's why the commandment has some holiness in it. Because he is there hovering or, uh, or expressing himself with the command. 
extremely important point. Unlike the United States government, she sent you the order by mail. Hashem is not like that. When he give you an order or commandment, he's there to watch it, implement it. If you want to connect to Hashem, fulfill the commandment, and then you 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 know that Hashem is hovering over you to see his his order being implemented. An extremely important point when you talk about the commandment. To see how it all play out in the book of Genesis, because we don't accept anything that is not written in the book. So let us ask the, more, the main question now. Looking behind me at the structure of Hashem kingship, that's very structured kingship. But we know that Hashem, God, creator, is beyond any structure, is infinite. Is beyond our conception. We cannot even, it doesn't even name name. We call it infinite because we have no other way to relate to it. I mean to Hashem himself, not to his kingship. So how come this infinite creator that has no meaning, no, no name, no uh, nobody can concept have a conception of him, he has no image, no body. How come suddenly he present himself in such a structural way in the Ten Command? What's the connection between them? How it came about? Says Sefer Etzira and the Kabbalah itself go to, to Genesis chapter 1 and see it for yourself. So we, as we go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says at the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. At the beginning. So there was some progress here. This happened only at the beginning. Some change took place. So Rashi jumped on it right, right away and says, you know what? In the beginning, he had a mind to create the universe only by Elohim alone, by the attribute of justice alone. And later on, he saw that it, it, it won't work. He needs some mercy to put in to counteract the attribute of judgment. But at the beginning, he had in mind to do, to create only the world only by Elohim. So who is he? Who is the one who had in mind to create the universe only with Elohim, with the attributes of Elohim, obviously? Rashi referred to the infinite creator. So the infinite one decided at the beginning, so when he's going to create this universe, he will sit on a throne of judgment. He will use only the attribute of judgment, Elohim, to, to create the sixth day. And that's what happened. For six days, Elohim created the universe according to absolute judge, 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 judgment, justice, absolute justice. You eat and being eaten. You cause pain and, and pain inflicted on you sooner or later. No one can run away from Elohim judgment. 
and it treats you with absolute justice, measure for measure. No mercy, no compassion. That's how nature around us is built, has been built for six days. And he was very satisfied. And every end of every day, he judged it and he said, it's good, good in the eyes of Elohim. It may not be seem good to us, but it's good in the eyes of Elohim. And everything was well, and, and the universe went on and proceeded from day to day very efficiently very successfully. And all that happened as he was functioning as a dictator. He just issue command and things happen. Let it be, and things happen. There was no one here in nature who can reject him or dare, dare to say, no, I don't agree. All the animals just follow evolution is guided by Elohim, and no one will raise a brow. But when he comes to create Adam on the sixth day, a creature with freedom of choice and a lot of desires and inclinations, this creature, of, uh, this creature Adam, the freedom of choice, you can, you can reject Hashem, Elohim. You can say, I don't like you. I don't like to follow. You can say, uh, Elohim, the, I think the laws are abrogated. Don't apply anymore. You can rebel against the Elohim, like, uh, like the Sodom Gomorrah. So the Gomorrah knew about Elohim, uh, but they rebelled against him. They did the opposite, the rebellion. So knowing that possibility, the infinite creator foresaw or knew that once Elohim put Adam on earth, with the freedom of choice, his chance to survive Elohim judgment is very slim. Elohim will surely eliminate him, Kalam. We discuss it in our class in chapter one. So what Rashi is saying that the infinite one, for so that uh, the, the two attributes, the attribute of Elohim uh, won't walk alone. So he offered, he offered to join the government with another. He offered to, in, to change the government and to add the attribute of mercy. So here is a point. When infinite, let's go back, when the infinite creator decided to create our universe, he consolidated himself, so to speak. We don't have any words to describe it. In Kabbalah, there are all kind of terms. I would say consolidated himself uh, to form a, a government in a way that we can perceive it, and the government will have the self, it will have attributes like judgment and mercy and many others, and will have a kingship. And he's going to create the universe along this line, three lines. And those attributes at the beginning had no connection between them. That's the input of this book of Yitzira. There was a chaos, as verse 2 said. It was chaotic, tohu and vohu. Each attribute ruled by himself. Elohim ruled our universe. 
alone, according to his features, absolute justice. And YHVH, the merciful one, hold her domain, uh, the Sabbath alone. And there are two different words. The Sabbath is, does not know any sin. It's only, a, by definition, it's all compassion and love and joy and holiness. The Sabbath day under YHVH. Where Elohim is mundane, this, uh, the angel of death here, the Sabbath doesn't know any angel of death. So there are two different universes, and then each attribute, there are many more attributes. Each attribute that of Hashem, of the infinite one, rule over entire different worlds. And we don't even know how many universes there are there. It's controlled by different attributes, so to speak, spiritual attributes. This universe was first created by the attribute of judgment. And then the infinite one added, ask the merciful one to join. So behind me, here's a diagram that show you Elohim created the one, two, two, three, four, five, six. And the attribute of uh, YHVH is uh, hovering alone somewhere. They are not connected. So that's a stage of disconnection. They are not talking to each other. They are not conversing with each other. They are not debating each other, those attributes. Each one is alone, as opposed to the second case. Here to remind you is a second, is what, what it looks like in chapter one, at the end of chapter one. It started, the chapter one starts with the Lokim alone at the beginning, and it ends uh, with this diagram that uh, at the end of the day, sixth day, you see the YHVH in the text. There's a lack holding. We discuss it. Uh, entering the sixth day, half of the acronym YHVH, half of it is in the sixth day. The VH, the half of it is still in the Sabbath. So she, she entered the universe, our universe, part time, hesitantly, shyly, modestly, because she doesn't want to be here. This universe is not like her, it's not her feature. She is here on contingency. She may fly back if she, did, if she doesn't like our universe or if she doesn't like men anymore. <clears throat> and she is here in order to create Adam and in order to offer Adam a chance to repent to be forgiven and to endure and to enter the Sabbath. So her present presence give our universe a direction where to go to the Sabbath, and it offer Adam a chance to be forgiven, ask forgiveness, pray for her, and start all over the game. Without her, there is no under Elohim, there is no forgiveness. And there is no even prayer. You just you just committed a sin and you get retribution, measure for measure. With her around, it's different. She has an input. And the input she offers depends on what you do. You better to be merciful, ask forgiveness, repent. All that is provided by her presence. 
So now we have a new government of the universe. <clears throat> it's not anymore Elohim alone, but it's Hashem Elohim. And that's the one that is, is expressed in the Ten Commandments. To remind you, he says, I am Hashem Elohim, the two attributes, who took you out of Egypt. So the attributes are in, in, in cooperation when he took out of, out of Egypt. So now the attributes speak to each other. Before that, there was Torah Vol, each one alone, and speaking to each other means in dialogue and conversion, and that's what Sefer Etzira is all about. It starts when he, he praises the, the value, the virtue of speaking. It's divine. Our universe, he says, could not, could not stand without speaking. And he, and when he when he said that he doesn't he, he refer to the attribute who speak and mankind also got this ability to speak to each other to come to agreement to share or to express our our. Each one can express his own universe to the other, trying to come to agreements so we can work together and form a common government, rather than each one standing on its own. So the importance of dialogue, the importance of democracy, as opposed to dictatorship. A lot to learn, to learn from this, presentation of Hashem kingship. The value of democracy as opposed to dictatorship. <clears throat> dictatorship can achieve a lot, but it will destroy itself at the end. Like Elohim would destroy the universe as he has done before. Has he been staying as a dictator to the end? He would he would have terminated our universe long ago. We are still here because of democratic governmentship of Hashem. Because Hashem listened to us, wait for our repentance, and give us a new chance, like in Noah flood. There was a rainbow covenant, and Hashem offered a mankind another chance unless we misbehave again. So let's uh, uh, review what happened so far in the story of creation. Uh, the, this uh, um, At first, a Lokim, an infinite creator, formed the condense himself, so to speak, to form a government. And it uh, and the government was and he created attributes that don't speak to each other. And then when allowing Elohim to create our universe alone, uh, Elohim would have terminated our universe. And, and now uh, the infinite one call, call upon the merciful attribute to join and to create now a new government. We speak to each other. According to the Sefer Yetzira, this new government of, of attributes speaking to each other, they are the one who call spirit. Spirit. The spirit are not round, but they come from talking. 
So as opposed to initially, the initial status they didn't speak to each other, chaotic, now they speak to each other, that's why the course failed. How many spheres there are to control our universe? Ten. Remember, I rem you remember as we spoke earlier, when he created the universe, he said, ten times let it be. And each time he said, let it be, he was there. Each time he was there, it is a sphere. So it's the ten spheres that control the universe till today. In the 10 plagues, each plague was a different sphere. And, and 10 commandments, each commandment presents a different sphere. All those spheres are the same. They just express themselves either in, 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 in human history, like in Egypt, in the commandments and in creation. So there are 10 spheres with the lower, they are lower in degree of holiness than the infinite one. They are his presence in our universe as, we, as he execute his command through the sphere, if you will. Now, how, those, how did those spheres came to control our universe. For that, the story of Eden was written. Because the, the story of Eden starts with the following words. This is the beginning of chapter two. I repeat it, we learned it in the past. Uh, at the beginning of sex, chapter two, where the first time the two attributes came together. Chapter one, the, each attribute was alone. Now chapter two, it says, this is the history of heaven and earth. As they, were, as, as they were recreated, so this, the universe is recreated now by the two attributes, consolidated. And it, on the day that Hashem Elohim, the two attributes made earth and heaven. So this is the first time that the two attributes walk together, as opposed to each one alone. And, uh, and with the input of the infinite creator, they form a, a virtual garden in a world of, uh, of forming, formation as opposed to creation. It's a virtual universe called Garden of Eden. Because chapter one is written in a Hebrew term, creation, Bria, and chapter two is Yitzira, forming, and then on earth is Asiya, making. What's the difference? If I want to put a house on the ground, I'll first conceive of it as Bria, creating it in my mind the wisdom of it, and what kind of, what kind of, uh, what kind of house I need. Is it a uh, commercial, residential? Where should I put it? That's the creating, the concept of the house. Then uh, make, then forming the house on a blueprint Architect would do it for me. 
on paper, it exists on a, on a paper, on a computer. And then I will call, uh, I will uh, contract a, a builder who will put a house on the ground. It's making it. So those these three stages is is described in a in a creation of the universe. First chapter one is what was on his mind. The creating chapter two is what he formed the Garden of Eden. And finally, when he, when he, he made the decision to put Adam on earth in the real, in real world. So chapter two, with the word of forming, uh, the infinite one formed it to offer Adam a, a chance to reach the Sabbath from there without ever living on earth. In his goodness and love for us, remember the infinite one that is doing everything with love and and and, uh, and goodness. I won't say mercy. Goodness and love. And he 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 formed the Garden of Eden, put virtual Adam in it, and for him it would be fine if they can live only in Eden and reach the Sabbath from there without living on earth. But he anticipated that in case the experiment will fail, he will give, he's gonna give Adam and Eve six commandments by which they will live on earth. And he will not leave, he will not just throw Adam to earth. He will come down to earth with them in the form of the sphere. So out of the 10 spheres that he formed at the beginning, and he said 10 times, at least six of them will accompany Adam on earth along with the six commandments. And every time Adam and Eve or mankind will fulfill a, commit, a commandment, they will steer up a sphere, no free, no free lunch. The goodness and the love of the infinite will shower on us depending on what commandment we do, how much we do it, and it's one-to-one -one relationship. You do this commandment, you get this fear. Six against six. In addition, there are also the primordial 10 from the other, from, from the other, from the 10 original one, they're still around. But the, the, this sixth one will more directly be stirred up, activated by our behavior. Here are the six commandments of Adam, of course, to idolatry, adultery, bloodshed, safety. This are the sixth one. It's, uh, the, that's a big, the, the, the core of the entire Torah. So the book of the book of Yitzhira or Bria or Bahir says the following. The whole book of Genesis is written to show you, to show us, this relationship of one to one. The commandment for being fulfilled and the sphere that is being stirred, stirred up by us doing the commandment. And who is doing it? The patriarch. So the book of Yitzhira says, look to the story of the patriarch and you will find the story of the commandment and the sphere. There are three stories. Sefer, Sefer, Sefer. 
Mishnah number one in the book of Yitzhak. The book of Genesis is Sefer, 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 three stories. And some read it Sefer, Sefer, and Mispar, a number. Because Mispar is a nickname for the sphere, sphere. They come out with number. Sphere number one, number two, number three. So in essence, the book of Genesis is written to tell us three stories. We look for the sixth patriarch, righteous people who dedicated their life to fulfill one of one, at least one commandment of the six. The entire life is revolving around one commandment. Look for, look for the patriarch, study the commandment they fight for, and then you understand the sphere that are stirred up or arisen by this patriarch. So who are the six righteous people who fulfill the six commandment? Says the Sefer Yetzirah, you start with Abraham. So you start with Abraham. You run through the story of Abraham, all of them, from the beginning of the end, revolve around, around one issue, theft, which is number four of, 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 uh, of uh, Adam commandment. So from the sixth patriarch, the patriarch number four, Abraham is fighting for commandment number four, theft. It's not just against uh, stealing. It's the whole concept of, of ownership. The concept of Hashem as the owner. The, po the concept of himself as a slave to Hashem. Circumcision, which is the emblem of, the slave of Hashem in our flesh. <clears throat> when King of Sodom wants to share with him, he says, leave me alone, I won't share with you from a shoelace to to wish to show. You are a master of stealing. So the whole story of Abraham revolves around stealing. Stealing land, his wife is stolen, Lot, his nephew steal water. <clears throat> Empire of the North come to steal the land and, and, and property and taxes from the, from the South. Stealing. And Hashem is the one who owns everything. And Abraham, Abraham responds to that, a fight against it all his life. So here is Abraham connected to commandment number four. Says Sefer Tzirah, now, Go back, look at Noah. All the story of Noah and the story of, 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 the, of, the, of the flood, starting with Cain and Abel, until the Rainbow Covenant, all of them, all the story is about around bloodshed, killing. Tubal Cain, the master killer, <clears throat> who found a strong metal loy a law that made his clan powerful, the war between Enosh clan and the Elohim clan, clan. Enosh clan produced Noah. Bnei Elohim produced Nama, his wife, and Mix Mitchell was forbidden because of the war and they dis they disregarded the war and they, they banned between the mixed mix marriage 
and Nama and Noah did marry each other despite the bed, but they didn't produce much children, only three or six other deals because there was a ban and they were fearful <clears throat> from the monster. The people say that a mixture between those two clans with fighting with each other will produce monsters. And so on. So the whole story of Noah and his generation is about uh, mugging, stealing, but mainly about bloodshed. And the whole Rainbow Covenant is <coughs> is presenting is uh, uh, is all about bloodshed law. That's what the Rainbow Covenant is all about. So from Abraham number four, we go back to Noah with bloodshed number three. <clears throat> and then we go back to Adam and Eve in Eden with the commandment number two, adultery. Therefore, she, a man, immediately as a woman is formed in Eden, it says, therefore a man shall leave his wife and his mother, his mother and father and cleave to his wife and that will be one. This is the source of all the all the blood, all the adultery laws, all the adultery all the sexual prohibition that we know, come from here. Go back to our class on Eden. So Adam and Eve story in Eden uh, introduces commandment number two. So from four of Abraham, we went down to three, Noah, and then to. Adam and Eve number two, and of course chapter one uh, it speaks about the idolatry. The moment that Adam was, is created, God speaks in plural, opening the door for idolatry, and we discuss, it's a, it's a long story, all the aspects of idolatry is there. So if you want to find anything about those commandments, read the text. Because those texts are block, blocks of stories about each patriarch tell you everything possible uh, that you need to know about this particular particular commandment. And go, Sefer Etzira goes on and says, oh, it's not just from Abraham backward, also from Abraham forward. After that comes Jacob. We skip Isaac because Isaac doesn't have a block of stories about him, but Jacob does. And all the block of stories about Jacob from the beginning of the end all revolve around civil rights and stealing, cheating, compensation, taking advantages of each other, or civil order. His wife, his daughter is raped and so on. So civil number five, civil justice and civil order is Adam commandment number five. Then comes the story of Jacob, of stealing Joseph. And uh, that's a sheer blasphemy because uh, the secretion of God's name, if such a family misbehave and they sell a brother for a slave, that's a desecration of God's name. Because, because they carry the God name on, on, their, on, on their shoulder, everybody looking at it. If they misbehave, they also misbehave, they, they smear the Torah. So that's the secretion of God's name. <clears throat> now, so we got, the, so we have two stories here already from Severet Sira. Story number one is the story of the patriarch, the life story the text, and it highlights the story of the commandment. Each patriarch, each righteous person excel in observing especially one commandment. And that's the structure of the book of Genesis. And it's not incidental. Now come the third story of the sphere. Because as we said, each 
person on each one when he does perform a commandment, he awakens or stirred up or, or arises or draw on him a sphere out of the six that allocated for, for, for Adam on Eve on earth. Beside the original, out of the other four are still around, but the, those six are the major one on earth. When, let's start again with Abraham. When Abraham fought for against theft, he acted, he counteracted it with grace, giving unconditional grace and compassion to people. <clears throat> he built a hospital and he, free of charge, he just, he didn't do it for good heart. He did it because he loved the same way of grace. So he still, he, he did grace, compassion, and he, was, he stirred up a compassion of in, in God's court, in God's kingship. So his, his action of, of uh, grace stirred up the attribute of, of grace in heaven. Jacob, when he fought for justice, he stirred up a similar attribute in heaven. And Noah and so on. So each, 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 each of the patriarch has stirred up a special, a special sphere. And now we can, we can, we know now the name of those spheres, the name of them are uh, uh, from uh, Abraham, you know, the grace, justice uh, from, from uh, glory and justice from, from Jacob, uh, Noah is the knowledge between the good and evil, Ab Adam and Eve in Eden, the sphere that control that, he said it's a goodness and love. Adam by himself is chapter one, stand for the sphere of wisdom. So we and and Joseph when he when he sanctified his life, he he acted against blasphemy and he, as a reward. He stirred up the kingship. So we have 10 spheres from the top to the bottom that uh, we can name them now. And uh, six of them at least, is, uh, from Abraham down, are, are stirred up by our action. Of course, if we, co if we also abide by the law of, uh, of adultery, we stirred up a real love in our own life and from Hashem. And so, so now we have a concept of what the commandments are and why do we need to, to follow them. They are not only here to give us a good society, to establish society that don't kill, don't steal, but when we when we fulfill them, we also draw on draw ourselves the love and the benefit from the sphere that we stir up in heaven and we cushion up and help us to proceed to the Sabbath from earth. Let's show a whole new light on what the commandments are. The same is true with the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments are basically just development of the Six. But the, basically the Six Commandments are enough to stir up on mankind, not only on Israel, but on mankind. But remember, all the patriarchs here are not Jews, they are Noahide. So no, no wonder that the Messiah comes 
God willing, he will teach mankind the kingship of Hashem, as described in, in, the, in the commandment number one, <clears throat> what the kingship stands for, and he will teach mankind to abide by the six, by the six and seven commandment of Noah. Noah just added one. Here is a diagram. This diagram shows you the path we are. So Adam, Adam and Eve in Eden, Noah, Abraham, Jacob, and Joseph. And you see there in red the, uh, the commandment, the story of the commandment that each one dedicated his life for. And on the, on the right side, or on the left side, on this side there, um, it shows you the, the appropriate, the, the particular sphere uh, that this, that you arise by, it's arisen by, by those commandments. Here are six spheres, which consist a, a block of, this, of the pen, it has a name, it's beyond our discussion now. Uh, but basically, uh, we have 10 spheres. And, uh, and uh, the six major ones are still up by the six commandments. So now we know, uh, again, the importance of the six commandments. So these are the three stories that the uh, book of it's here are referring to. Sefer, 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 or Sefer, Sefer, and Mispar. A book, and a book, and a number. You see it here, a book, and a book, and a, num and a number. Now, it's beautifully descriptive. The, the, uh, is described here in this diagram. Well, think more about it, read about it, and uh, God willing, we'll meet next class. Next class. Thank you for being with me.